galactic core season here in Australia. It's just started and you've got a little tiny window first thing in the morning. First thing in the morning, it's quarter to three in the morning. The galactic core is rising just there. We should be able to get the emu head coming up first thing in the morning. Let's have a look. The iPhone 16 has been a bit of a letdown, to be honest, with the low light capability. I'm actually going to do this with two different phones. I'm going to try it with the iPhone 16, the cutting edge for photography for Apple, if you like. And I've got an old Pixel here. It was old, two generations old. We'll try it as well. I reckon the Pixel will get it because it's just got that astrophotography mode. But I've got a subject here. It's pretty windy at the moment. So to understand the conditions that we've got here, it is still summer here in Australia. We've still got another month of it. It's pretty bloody warm at the moment. So <laughs> for those of you who do put comments down the bottom of my videos when I'm out walking through the bush at night time, hey, aren't you worried about snakes and stuff? Not, not really. Today it's a bit different because it's still pretty bloody hot. It's, it's, uh, it's probably 25, 20 to 25 degrees at the moment right now at, at quarter to three in the morning. So absolutely, there'll be snakes out. Um, got a telegraph pole here or a light, what, what would you guys call it? Or we'd just call it a telegraph pole, not a utility pole or something that you might call it in the States. Because it's still a bit windy at the moment, um, I want something that's not gonna move. So I'm just gonna use that to give a bit of scale. I think when you use a subject that is quite large, if you compose the photo right, you can see the size of that Milky Way, that galactic core. So I've got it set up just over here. So you're gonna need a uh, tripod and a phone holder because the tripod gives you the 30 seconds on an iPhone. And I've got this set up right where it needs to be. I'm gonna turn this light off and I'm just gonna take the photo. I'm looking for sun. Let's have a look at this photo. Telegraph poles there, the, the wires going through it kind of get how weird, the, the wires kind of stop. <laughs> That's weird, it's removing the power lines sometimes. Like, you can see there, it's it's removed them in parts and left it there in other parts. It's actually really weird. I'm not sure if it's the wind that's blowing it. Maybe, maybe the wind's blowing it a bit too much, but it's not blowing a great big gale, so I'm not sure what's caused that with the the power lines on the pit on the uh, iPhone. We'll see what the Pixel does. It, it, there's a, let me tell you, there's a place that's behind my house that I do a lot of videos in, and you, and like Aurora videos and stuff like that, and, and you'll see these power lines going through it. So it's always getting picked up by the Pixel. It's weird how this time it's, it's uh, oh, sorry, by the iPhone, I mean. It's, it's weird how the, the power lines kind of disappear and reappear. The sky looks pretty good, but the, the power lines, I don't know, is, there's no consistency, and that's, I guess, the point that I'm that I'm feeling about all this. That there's no consistency with astrophotography with this iPhone. Not like there was before. You, you, I used to be able to look at an iPhone photo and go, bam, that's an iPhone photo. Anyway, the Pixel is taking a photo right now. <laughs> there, <laughs> there are these weeds here. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll recall. <laughs> I would have put money on it. That was a snake just then. <laughs> it scared me a bit. <laughs> Uh, let me just record this for you. That bloody, that, that, that weed just ended. I thought it moved. I thought it was a freaking snake. But anyway, it's not a snake, it's just a weed. Um, so I've got the pixel on there now. We'll, with the pixel, as some of you may know, it's taking lots of photos in that four minute photo that it's taking. It's taking 16 minutes, 16, 16 second long photos and then lay, layering them on top of each other. So the only downside I think with the Pixel, I think the Pixel is the best phone on the market to do astrophotography with. All right, there's the uh, Pixel photo and guess what? The power lines have moved with that too. So it's, isn't that just a sad situation? Someone who is an iPhone person, uh, I guess the, the, the wind is blowing it around too much because even the Pixel lost, uh, lost the power lines as well. It's just been a, not making excuses that iPhone 16 has been a pretty bad phone for doing this. And I just figured it was one of those undocumented features that it has in its low light mode as well. Anyway, that's a ripper bloody photo. I'm gonna edit both of these up in Lightroom and uh, we'll see how they compare. On the face of it, the, uh, the Pixel phone actually looks a little bit darker, to be honest. Anyway, 
we'll see. Before we get into editing, let's talk about today's video sponsor, which is Audio. Audio brings us one simple license for all of your platforms, no headaches about copyright infringement, nothing like that, just premium sounds, premium music, just the way you need it. Do you need cinematic vibes? Well, you've got it. Do you need some upbeat sort of beat music? Well, it's got it as well. It's got every type of genre, mood, that sort of thing, music at your fingertips. If you're not sure what you want really, you can go into the AI on this platform, type in what you're actually shooting, what you're trying to achieve, and it will actually suggest different tracks for you. It's it's bloody good. I have found all the music that they have so far that I've needed, I found it right there on that platform. It sounds good, it's good to listen to, and it fits the content that I create just perfectly. Every time I'm looking for a sound effect, I'm finding it there as well. Let's say you've got a bit of a track in mind and you're using something like Spotify and you go, well, I wanna use this sort of a music tune or track in my video. You can actually link that Spotify song throw into the AI on audio and it was it will give you a song that sounds very similar to what you've asked it for. And so far I've tried this many times and not once have I been disappointed with the music that it's provided for me. It's it's pretty good. If you create online content you know that music can be very expensive. This here is actually priced very competitively. Annually, you can pay $199 and it's going to give you everything that I've spoken about here so far with the linking of the Spotify tracks, for example, it gives you that in that annual billing. You can monetize this across three platforms, which is, well, pretty bloody good. It's also got a one-off payment if you wanted to go down this path of $199 and that will give you lifetime usage of this platform. It is going to take away a couple of things though, and they are the things that they have to maintain, I guess. And that is some of the AI features, that, that linking of Spotify, uh, that requesting, describing a mood, etc. That there is not covered in the lifetime billing. But if you were to go yearly, and currently I pay about 400 odd dollars a year for the music that I get on this channel. This is so much cheaper than that. And I've been using it now for a month and I haven't found a need yet to go back to where I was before. Very good product, highly recommend it. Let's get on to the rest of this video. Here we have three photos from the two phones I've just shot last night, or the, early this morning. And I want to look at a couple of things, the variations between these two phones. Now I get we are not comparing apples to apples. I get that the iPhone hasn't got its own astrophotography mode. And it's very, very evident. So this photo that we're looking at here is the Pixel phone. What I will say about all phones, all phones doing this sort of a shot, the telltale is in the border, right around the edge of the screen. If we look up the top, even on the Pixel phone, which does all of that layering, the layering is to help stop light or star trails and help reduce the noise. And on the edge of this image here, there is, if you look closely, you can see some star trails here. I'll actually put these photos over there on shamemoston.com. You can download these yourself and have a look. So you can look at it full res. I'll actually put uh, the raw files over there. I'll put the edited photos that, that, I'm, that I'm doing here. So you can see there on the edge, uh, there's a bit of uh, star trails all the way around the edge. So sum up the top right hand corner, top left hand corner as well. If we get down the bottom here, we'll almost certainly see some. Yep, there's some there as well. And over on the left-hand side, there's definitely some there as well. But if we go into the center, there's, there's minimal star trails. The sky is nice. The noise is pretty damn good. For a phone, the noise on this, the noise reduction is really good. Then we'll go and look at the iPhone. And this one here is the iPhone. Yep. And you look at that and you go, when I look at this comparing the two, just from the outset, you you would argue that the iPhone looks better. But with astrophotography, we tend to pixel peep a fair bit. If we go up to the edge up the top here, look at that. This is something iPhones have always had these artifacts, and I'm not really sure what causes them. It's something in the computational uh, processing of these sorts of images that it leaves these, it's almost like fireflies. and it's always done it. You normally notice it more in the core, like in there, it's all these little like worms almost going around the place. But the 16 is the first one that I've seen. It does a couple of things a bit funky. 
those little worms up on the edges where the star trails usually are, they're, they're, they're very dominant there in the edges. And if we go around all the way around the edges, they are very, very dominant. It's, it's kind of weird. And there's nothing that I've tried so far with any editing um, that I've done on any entity platform that I've used that I can get rid of those because it's in the image. So we get that all around the whole photo. But when we get into the core, when you're pixel peeping these sorts of photos on an iPhone, it's just not good. One thing I do like though about the iPhone is these major stars, like where, where these are here. These I think look pretty damn good. I think they look better than the pixel. The pixel is not pushing it in too hard and blowing those out. So what do you do, left or right? I don't know. Anyway, let's edit up a couple of these and we'll see what we can do. I used to go shoot cooler, uh, as in the temperature, the white balance, shoot cooler than, than warm. And um, Greg McMillan, uh, he showed me an article one time where, and, and it was right, you probably shouldn't do that because it's not what the eye sees. And I used to always go cooler because it was usually a cooler time of year. So I've just increased that water, white, balance, water balance, white balance up a little bit, and I'm gonna add a little bit of magenta to this. Now with all phones, regardless of the brand of phone, regardless of the style of shooting that you do, when you're doing this sort of photo, you're going to need to dehaze the shot. And in Lightroom, it's it's not as far down the bottom as what it used to be a couple of years ago. It's, it's up the top here with all the, the uh, light correction. And that's just a little bit, only a little bit. But if you look at the what that does to that photo when I bring it in and out, it's pretty bloody good. It's, it's very effective. What else do I want to do to this photo? I'm probably going to add a mask. And I don't want to add a mask to the whole sky. Um, actually, do I want to do that first? I do do want to do it. I do want to do that first. We go up here to the masks. And we're going to ask it to select the sky. There we are there. It's detected the sky. And now I want to reduce the blacks in the sky. It's going to add that little bit of contrast. And I'll increase the whites just that little bit. And that's it. That's all I want to do for this. You do this the same way that you do on the phone. You can do this exactly what I'm doing here. You can do it on your phone. Um, we'll go over to the edit again. I'm going to add another bra uh, uh, mask and I'm going to add, where are you there? Up the top there, plus, and I'm looking for the radial gradient, there it is there. And I generally put this over the core, in line with the core, roughly about there. Might make a little bit longer. That's good there. And I'm just going to increase uh, the texture of this, um, Where are you? There you are. Just a little, not texture, sorry, the clarity. I'm just going to get rid of that texture that I added, add a little bit of clarity, and we'll hit that. And that's it. That's all I'm doing to this photo. What I do, if I was really pushing myself, I would say let's increase the the um, the foreground um, with a brush. We'll go with a masking on a brush. We'll just highlight this in here. Not too much. You can certainly spend a lot more time on this sort of thing than what I'm doing right now. And we'll increase the shadows just a little bit. All I'm trying to do here, it's not going to be perfect. It's going to be a long way from perfect. The dynamic range of a phone is nothing like what it is for DSLR and mirrorless. Probably not the blacks. The blacks didn't work, but the shadows did work just that little bit. Bring the highlights up or not? Mm, no, we'll leave them where they are. That's it. I'm not doing anything else to that photo. So we'll head over and have a look at the pixel. And we're pretty much doing the same thing on this as what we did on the iPhone. So we'll go into, oh, this is interesting. If we look down the bottom here on the pixel, you can see there's a bit more light there than what there was on the iPhone. That's really interesting. Uh, so I'm going to make this a little bit warmer straight off the bat, go down to dehazing, increase the dehazing slider just a little bit. Uh, masking, doing the same thing again here. Select the sky, it's detecting it. There it is. We'll reduce the blacks only a little bit because the pixel's already pretty well on the money. Will I increase the whites, maybe. If you are playing with these sliders, if you have not edited many images before, I would encourage you to just keep on using the sliders. Just use them and use them and use them. And over time, by all means, do courses, look online. 
but over time you're going to learn what these different things do to the image. All right, we'll hit that from there. We're going to give it one more for the radial granite, you remember? We're going to do that over the galactic core, bring him down. Like I said, we can spend a lot longer on this, just giving you the rough idea of what I would normally do, and then we'll compare the two images. Um, we're going to increase the, no, what are we doing? We're doing the clarity. Just increase the clarity. What you'll notice as the year moves on and the galactic core gets higher in the sky, what I'm doing right here will make more of a difference as that orange gaseous cloud comes up above the horizon. It's not quite there just yet. Um, what else we want to do? One more. We'll go with a brush. Where are you? Why can't I see you? There you are there. And we're just going to brush in the foreground here. We're doing a similar thing. Going to increase the shadows just a little bit. Might bring that noise down a little bit. Is that up the top? Get confused where they are on these. There it is. There it is. I'm quite happy with that. Do we want to do any noise reduction on this photo at all? I'm going to say no, we're just going to leave them as they are so you can see when you go ahead and download them just how they are in, as, a, as a whole. Now, how does that compare to the two? The iPhone is very bright and we can't really separate it like what we can with the Pixel. But overall, I think the Pixel has it. We knew that was going to be the case. Um, what do you think? Pixel or iPhone? interesting by the way i got these images from the pixel onto the um onto the computer here onto the mac in a really interesting way it was something that i hadn't actually used before let me just find it mac droid is the program is the app that i use that's it's here and i've connected samsung s23 ultra the pixel 8 pro even a huawei i've connected and been able to use that device just being able to explore it just like an external hard drive. It has been a huge change for me and it's worked every time that I've done this. It's, it's quite good. Anyway, guys, that's it. Let me know what you think in the, in the comments down the bottom and I'll see you next week. Catch you later.